Hello and welcome to the recap of day 30 in the Karen Reed case. The closing arguments, jury instructions, and the jury had a verdict, uh, not have had a verdict, oh, sorry. They were sent back to discuss for two hours and 50 minutes. Then they were sent home. Most of us probably were a little bit surprised that it would take them that long because all the evidence from experts in this case have been she wasn't uh, he wasn't hit by a car her car didn't hit anyone but i'm a notoriously bad at reading juries and i always sit here and think this is the clearest case in the world how can you get to anything else than guilty or not guilty but apparently they could Starting off the day yesterday, we had another jury dismissed. We don't know why. There was a lot of commotion. There was talks about it was a very pro Karen Reed jury juror who was dismissed. Probably not good for Karen Reed. But why? We don't know. And that's again, this case is so weird. How do they get to the last day and then chuck out a jury juror? just before we start it's so weird but then we went on to the closing statements and can i just i've been doing this for a year i would rate aj's closing arguments as probably top three of closing arguments i have heard the entire time he was a storyteller he told a story all the way from a to c it was consistent. It was the same story. He kept the timeline going. I might would have wanted a little more visuals because I like visuals. And I think it's easier to understand when you look at something at the same time. But a good story hitting all the highlights. Trooper Proctor was a bad officer. He did this. Ending off uh, his uh, testimony about... Uh, or his closing arguments, talking about he was looking for nudes, how bad an officer he was. Talking about whatever Lally has been doing has just been wasting their time when even his own evidence didn't show the crime he purported it showed. He talked about how Trooper Paul had none of the skills he needed. And he had this demeanor of being angry but it didn't feel like he played it up to the crowd i liked that i, I really liked it it was an hour long there weren't i couldn't see much fat you could have trimmed off that bone there was a great closing argument it was consistent all the way through the ending because they had a one hour time limit limit it seemed like when he got the five minute warning he missed about half a page that probably could have rolled it all up really nicely. But uh, I think he made a great closing arguments, all the highlights, talking about all the possible other people who could have done it, how the evidence never pointed to Karen Reed, and how Lally, as the next thing, would come up there and say, don't look at the evidence. Look at all of these small pieces I stacked all throughout the case, who, which really doesn't have anything to do with anything but clearly shows she's guilty. And that was a good hour. It felt it felt way shorter because you got engaged with the story. He kept you there. He hit all the, the highlights you needed. I would have wanted a little more visual representation of what he was talking about, but different folks, different strokes. Then we got to Lally and talk about being different. He did exactly what AJ talked about. He was pointing everywhere, saying, look at this, look at this, look at the Ruba, look at the, this voice message. She left him after he was dead. Look at what he, she said to John's sister-in-law about we, we won't talk again. And they never did. No, because she had a court order. She couldn't talk to the family. Look at Denise, who had to come to court to testify. You made her come to court and testify. And Lally... Can you please explain to me? Judge Bev said you weren't allowed to mention the kids' names in the pretrial motions. You mentioned that 
poor young girl's name at least three, maybe four times in court yesterday. And you had a timeline with her name on it. Why, Lally, are you either that bad at your job or such a big a-hole? I would be furious if I was the family of John O'Keefe. First, 27 days of snow, what music was played at the waterfall, and what, if any, type of glass that was shot through a cannon on a car. But again, the same family invited Brian Albert, Jen McCabe, and Colin Albert to court. So, no, they lost a loved one. I'm not going to talk about that. <clears throat> But the rest of it, Lally's highlights. The magic hair that stayed on the car. Yeah, because it was frozen to the car, and then they were put in a garage for four days before the car, car was examined. With snow on it, that melted off. Why didn't it take off that magic hair? Again, I hope the jury is as smart as I am, because it makes no sense when you think about it. He changed his timeline again. His opening statements clearly stated 10.45. Now we are back at 10.30. But he never ever talked about when in his timeline she hit him. He he put up a timeline, then he put up that key cycle thing as just an overlay to another overlay. And he, in my best recollection, he never really talked about how he believed John O'Keefe passed away. We had this key cycle ha happened, and that's when we believe she hit him. He never talked about the injuries and how they are not consistent with science. Of course he didn't, because it would ruin his case. But the problem is, why are we having a trial when your evidence is so weak, you can't even find some kind of way to talk about a timeline at where John died? He did exactly what AJ said. Look here, look here. Just don't look at the facts. And I got so mad in the end that I I had to, to take out my uh, monitors and just walk. Because he now changed how John O'Keefe was hit and got his injuries for the, I believe this is the fourth or fifth time. Remember the first theory when they charged for the first time was they had a domestic in the car. His bruises to the face was because she punched him with a cocktail glass in the face. Then it was a three-point turn. Then what they came up with that 24.2 miles, 60 feet in reverse. Then they came with the 24.2 uh, with an arm outstretched with a glass in it so it damaged the tailgate. Yesterday, and I got so mad and I can feel my blood pressure rising again. He changed it to, he must have been standing with his arm kind of in front of him with the glass because then it makes sense. Well, that then you change your story about how all the bumps came on the tail light, And then he claimed the scratches, the clear dog scratches, the scratches that made me get into this case because this is clearly an animal attack. He claims now that if you can remember that small piece of plastic that had some dimples on it are uh, consistent with his injuries. At that point, I got mad I, and I left because that is so absolutely idiotic that I, if I had been on the jury, I wouldn't even have finished my tacos before I had gone back into Judge, uh, Judge Cannon and said, hey, we have a verdict. Lally is an idiot. We're letting her walk. Those dimples that should apparently have made those scratches are designed not to do that. Lally, if you ever talk to an expert or just someone who watched a program about safety in cars, you would know car parts are actually designed to try and lessen impacts damage, not enhance them. And you can't drag all across an arm with blunt 
dimples. This is so stupid that I, and I have to be honest, I thought they would be back within two hours with a not guilty verdict. When they go went over that, I'm starting to get nervous. We are back on verdict watch today. Will we get a conviction today or a, a verdict today? I hope so. I really, really hope so because to me, this case is clear. Karen Reed didn't hit John O'Keefe with that car. If she didn't hit John O'Keefe with that car, it doesn't matter how much she drank, how angry she was on the phone, if John kissed a girl in Aruba, if Karen bought the daughter Dunkin' Donuts. It doesn't matter. Everything everyone should be talking about in this case, and I know it's really hard for some of the people on the other side, is is there any evidence Karen Reed hit John O'Keefe with a car. And this is what the jury should talk about too. No. All the evidence point to John O'Keefe was not struck with a car. He had a big, massive blunt force trauma to the back of his head, causing a brain, uh, brain bleed, which couldn't happen in the, in the way Lally claims or Trooper Paul claims. AJ... Yanetti and Miss Little has have a consistent story from day one. Lally have changed his timeline and how he believed John O'Keefe passed away during the 30 days we have been on trial. Let's all hope the jury sees this too, because Karen Reed didn't do it.